So Zwift Academy has been run and won. The men's was won by Alex Bogner. The women's was won by Maud Oldman. I think that's you, how you pronounce it. But in this video, I wanna chat about Alex Bogner and the men's Zwift Academy because there's a few uh, rumors I've heard and a few things I wanna chat about and dig into where to now for Alex for his racing career. So just specifically in the Zwift Academy, I think well-deserved winner, Alex. Uh, Started off probably not as strong as the other riders, but then on the climb on the second last day up the Sacalobra, for Alex to be climbing with Sam Hill, um, they finished very close to each other. Alex, I think, just won. But for Alex to even be sticking with Sam Hill, who's been arguably one of the fastest climbers in the NRS for the last two years, probably, for Alex to be sticking with Sam um, as a 19-year-old is, is very impressive. So purely talent and performance-wise, Alex proves that you know he's made of the right stuff. But I do have a few concerns about how Alex is gonna deal with going pro. So let me, how, let me break this down. So I've heard a rumor, uh, now it is a rumor because I haven't been able to get it confirmed either way, but I've heard a rumor that Alex will be joining the Alperson Phoenix Continental Development Team for two or three years and not joining the Alperson Phoenix Pro Team. So. If you're unsure of what I mean here, Alpers and Phoenix have their professional team, which at the moment already has 31 riders registered in it, but they also have a development team, which, which this year only had 13 riders in it. It had guys like Sam Gaze, Guillaume Van Kiel's book. So some still some good riders, but they're only a Conti team. So I've heard a rumor that Alex will be joining this development team and not the pro team which is technically what the competition was for. It's to get a professional contract, a paid salaried position on the pro team. I've heard that he's going to be joining the development team instead. Again, that's just a rumor. I haven't been able to, on pro cycling stats or any websites, I haven't been able to see a confirmed team list from either the continental team or the pro team updated since the academy's finished to see where Alex Bogner's been signed to. So still a rumor. Uh, waiting to see what happens there. But just in terms of that, what do I think of this? Because I... If, if Alex joins the pro team, I am pretty concerned because it's easy to look back and see Jay Vine's progression and be like, oh, well, joining the pro team is the best place because you get the biggest opportunity. But if you go and look at Jay's uh, season in, in this year, in 2021, it's, it, it was pretty rough. It started off not great. So essentially, he didn't do any racing and, to be honest, didn't have much contact from the team until April. Where he, where he got to do the Tour of Turkey. He got a stand, and that was pretty much, for him, it was sort of make or break. You either come out and Tour of Turkey, get a result and prove your spot on the team and force the team to give you more race starts. Or if Jay didn't do well at Tour of Turkey, he probably would have just faded uh, into the background and um, <laughs> that could have been the end of, his, end of his year. No more race starts. But he did Tour of Turkey. The next month, he did uh, Vuelta Andalusia, dns uh, on stage three. I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe he was sick. Um, but then didn't have any racing for three months. And then got a... I, if I remember correctly, he got a very late call up to Volta Burgos. I think it was a few days before. They're like, oh, by the way, uh, we're going to put you in Volta Burgos, which is a pretty big race. Um, he came out, did that, but hadn't had any racing for three months. And then after that, he obviously went to the Volta where he had his breakthrough sort of... Uh, Results was getting in those breaks and essentially entirely proved his spot on the team. But if he hadn't gotten that result at Tour of Turkey, <laughs> uh, then had the mental fortitude to go and train for three months without any racing and come out the Volta, he would have just you know faded into the background and disappeared on this team. And I, and that's my concern for for someone like Alex if he does join the pro team um, on a team. Look how many riders there are. You've got Matthew Vanderpool, Rob Stannard, Tobias Bayer. Tim Merlier, Jasper Philipson. I mean, Jay Vine. Look at this team list, and then potentially in here, spot number thirty-two, you're going to have Alex Bogner. You know, is is he going to be able to make it and get race starts to prove himself in this team environment at the age of nineteen? Um, when really the reason why he won the academy looked like it was more from from talent and potential three, four years down the track. Not in terms of if you, I mean, to be honest, if you're picking someone off pure ability to perform in the pro peloton as of right now, well, I think you probably would have gone with someone like Cooper, to be honest, or Sam. 
So yeah, I think looking at that, the, the rumor that he's actually joining the development team on a two or three year contract probably makes more sense. And for someone like Alex, it's probably a good opportunity, a better opportunity than getting thrown in this pro team where he's a nobody, probably won't get many race starts and then will just disappear after a year. Um, I think that's, unfortunately, I do think that's the reality of what will happen if he joins the pro team. If this rumor is true and he joins the development team, probably a better opportunity for him long term. But if that is true, the problem I'd have with that is that that's not really the spirit of the competition. The spirit of the competition is to win a spot on the pro team and have someone who's almost ready but just hasn't had the opportunity to, to, to throw him in the deep end and see him swim. And is Alex the guy for that if he joins the pro team? I don't know. I mean, Jay made the most of the opportunity this year, but Jay is very independent. He stands at his own two feet. He's very mature. So he was able to go over there have not much contact from the team, still be able to get the race starts, show up in good form. There's very few people that would have been able to deal with that environment that Jay made the most of. And you know, is, is Alex as a 19 year old gonna be able to make the most of that if he does join the pro team? I don't know, um, would be very tough. So yeah, a bit to unpack there. I guess we gotta watch this space. Let's see the team rosters get announced. I mean, they're gonna have to come out over the next, well, it's almost 2022 now. So they're gonna have to get announced in the next couple of weeks and we'll see uh, which team Alex has signed to. If he has signed to the Conti development team, what does that mean for Zwift Academy? I mean, it's in the terms and conditions of the academy that you're winning a pro contract on Alpes and Phoenix, not on the development team. So, you know, where does that, how does that leave the competition? Uh, yeah, very interesting one to watch. Wherever Alex does end up, best of luck to him. Really interesting and, and exciting opportunity and the, the talent he has to be doing those performances that he did uh, over in Spain is incredible and really exciting a uh, guy to watch riding wise over the next couple of years. So thanks for watching this video guys. Hope you found it interesting and I'll catch you in the next one.